Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Arc Fort. Jordan here, and I'm doing things a little bit differently this time. Because today's episode is going to be a little bit more sciencey, I decided to make things a little bit more animated so I could keep your attention. Also, you'll notice I'm wearing my lab coat, and obviously if I'm wearing my lab coat, we have to get down to the science. So here we go. Today, we're going to talk a little something about color theory. That's that thing that talks about how colors affect the way that we think and the way that we act and the way that we react. But today I'm going to talk about how it affects the way we play augmented reality games. So let's start with the augmented reality game of augmented reality games, and that's Ingress. Now, I know what you're saying, well, Jordan, I never really liked Ingress, I never really got into it, or I don't even know what you're talking about, I've never even heard of this game, and that's okay, because this is still going to be useful for what we're talking about today. If you're interested in other augmented reality games, then that's fine. We'll get to that. But let's just use this as an example for right now. If you don't know anything about Ingress, then you should know that it's separated out into two factions. The green faction, which is the Enlightened, and the blue faction, which is the Resistance. Now, I have to admit on the front end that there is more of a difference here than just that one is green and one is blue. It can really come down to a personal belief and a personal conviction rather than just your favorite color. So if I'm being fair, I have to tell you on the front end that this fact is going to skew our results just a little bit. And that's okay, because I feel like the evidence is just so incredibly overwhelming that once we get to the end of all of this, we're going to realize that colors do in fact play a role in augmented reality games. So, let's get started. In Ingress, your objective is to travel to unique locations that are marked as portals on your map. By traveling to these locations, you can collect gear, such as weapons and resonators, to capture other portals. It will also provide you, hopefully, with a portal key. You can then travel to another portal location, and, using the key that you've collected, connect that portal to the portal which you've acquired a key to. Triangulating these links between three portals creates a portal field, which is how you, as a player, collect MUs, or mind units. The maximum length of a link is determined by the energy level of the portal. The higher the energy level, the higher the maximum limit for a link. The other two limits on links are that you cannot throw links through other links and you cannot throw a link from a portal that is currently within a field, unless you're throwing to one of the anchor portals within that field. So now that you have a basic understanding of what the gameplay is like, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to explain a couple of little gameplay nuances to you that I wouldn't otherwise be able to describe to you. So where does color theory fit into all of this? Well, it's time I start explaining myself a little bit. In order for the basic principle of the theory that colors affect the way that we play augmented reality games to be true, there has to be at least some amount of evidence that says that one team is significantly ahead of the other. In episode 12 of Ingress Obsessed, Agent RB Fly can be heard asking Agent OCF a very pointed question. Do you think there's a reason? While the question comes off on the surface as being a little bit conceited and biased, we have to take a look and realize where Rebecca is coming from here. In the context of when this comment was made, there had been four previous anomalies in 2014. Recursion, Interitus, Helios, and Darsana. For those of you who don't know about Ingress, anomalies are the live event series that Niantic hosts for Ingress. They are the time at which the factions come together in a head-to-head -head battle to see who can claim the city. Now, I have to admit that the scoring for Anomaly series is definitely complicated. So complicated, in fact, that I'm definitely not going to cover it, and it's not within the scope of this video. But, it does not take a genius to figure out that when the Resistance wins every single Anomaly series in the year 2014, they clearly have some edge over the Enlightened. So, clearly the Resistance had something going for them in the year 2014. But how do we determine that it's actually the color blue, and not just the fact that they're a well-organized faction? To reach this conclusion, we have to look at the data that reaches outside of Ingress, and that is the world of psychology. In 1950, a man by the name of Faber Buren published a work entitled Color Psychology and Color Therapy. Faber committed his life to studying color and its effects on the human mind. In his book, he published the results of some of his findings and discovered some very interesting facts about color theory and color association. One of the very interesting things that he discovered had to do with the color blue. 
which as coincidence would have it is the color that we have in question here. The first and most interesting fact about the color blue that he discovered is that it seems to be everyone's favorite color. When Buren took a poll of everybody's favorite color, he discovered that 42% of people would choose blue as their favorite color. Now when you think about this, it's not all that surprising. How many times have you asked somebody what their favorite color is, and their immediate answer was blue? But what makes this so interesting is that no other color seemed to come anywhere close to being as popular as the color blue. As a matter of fact, the color green, which is the second most popular color, only comes in with 14% of the vote. That ends up being a difference of 28%, which means that if we're picking just based on colors, blue would outnumber green 3 to 1. Now, like I said before, a lot goes into faction choice besides favorite color, but if you look at the stats of 2014, you'll realize that I'm not wrong about blue having the numbers. In 2014, the reason that the Resistance did so well is that they brought almost twice as many players to live events as the Enlightened. It was mentioned multiple times in the Ingress report about how the Resistance had more players present than the Enlightened. Or at least not at first. You see, things began to change towards the end of Helios when the Enlightened made two major victories both within the same day using the same method. They made two mega fields over the two anomaly sites in the US in order to create a multiplier for the score. Not only did it multiply the scores of the Enlightened in those areas, but it also prevented the resistance players in that area from throwing any links or any fields, and that would have given them a lot of extra points if they could have pulled it off. But, unfortunately, the Enlightened was seeing the bigger picture. And that's what brings us back to color association. Over the last few years, as color theory has developed and color association has developed, we've learned a lot more about color association. Blue, for example, we learn is associated with things like trustworthiness and calmness, but it's also associated with strategic thinking and focus. Those last two are really important to us. Believe it or not, researchers have determined that colors and color association affect the way that we perform in video games. It's no surprise then that blue, being associated with strategic thinking, is associated with strategy, therefore blue teams dominate when it comes to strategy games. In cluster battles, then, it makes sense that blue would dominate almost every single time when they're the ones running around, catching all the right fields, throwing all the right blockers, and keeping the Enlightened at bay. So even in anomalies like Interitus, where there are just as many Enlightened players as there are Resistance players, the Resistance seems to still come out on top because they are the strategic ones. In 2014, the Resistance won because they took the most individual portals, the most individual links, the most regional cells, and the most clusters, all things which were tight-knit within the Anomaly site. In order to pull this off, the Resistance would have to have a high amount of focus on the Anomaly site and a lot of strategy to take each of the clusters, cells, and links. So how is the Enlightened ever going to win against the strategists who have more players? This is where Green's color associations come into play. When you think of the color green, most likely you associate it with nature. The beautiful outdoor scenery of the green leaves on the trees and the green grass that runs along the mountainside. These are all things that we associate with the color green. Your mind literally opens itself up to see the bigger picture, which in terms of ingress means likely looking at the bigger picture of the intel map. The farther you zoom out, the more portals you see, the bigger potential fields you see to put over clusters. The numbers back this up as well, showing that the Enlightened produced more fields than the Resistance over the clusters of the Anomaly site. The bad news for the Enlightened was that in 2014, cluster battles were the primary gameplay style in Anomaly series. Because cluster battles are so focused on the Anomaly site itself, even the large fields and large links, while they did give an edge, were not enough for the Enlightened to actually take an Anomaly series. However, with 2015 came the introduction of a new style of gameplay for the Anomaly series, and that was Flash Shard Anomalies. These anomalies require the factions to discover and to move certain shards that appear somewhere in the Anomaly Zone during the time of the Anomaly. The factions have to create a link from the shard's origin portal to their target portal and hold that link until the next movement cycle. While the Enlightened were not able to nail down a series victory even in the year 2015, they were able to try out this new style of gameplay which played more to their strengths. And, in the year 2016, they came back with a vengeance. 
At the start of the Obsidian Anomaly series, the Resistance were confident that they would be able to walk in and take another victory, seeing as the Enlightened had not taken a series victory in over two years. However, a new style of gameplay was being introduced in the Obsidian series, called Cluster Shards. It's a hybrid form of gameplay between cluster battles and flash shard anomalies. In this hybrid gameplay, factions are awarded points for standard cluster battle points such as portal zoned, volatile portal zoned, links created, and anchor fields created, but also are awarded points for collecting shards. At the first anomaly event of the series in Hamamatsu, Japan, everybody expected the resistance to walk in and dominate yet again taking another event and series victory. However, the Enlightened was not here to mess around and they certainly were not going to walk in with a defeatist attitude. The Resistance figured they'd have no problem capturing the points they needed from the cluster battle and so focused their energy on capturing the shards, a mistake which arguably cost them the entire series. The Resistance focused most of their manpower on a strategy which would move the shards to the target portals. However, they never really considered the fact that they were not going to know where the shards were until the time that they appeared. So when the shards started appearing and the resistance tried to implement their strategy, by the time they made their first moves, the Lighten had already beaten them to the punch. And because the resistance had focused their manpower on catching the shards, that left the Lighten wide open to take as many points in the field as they needed to. As a matter of fact, at the Hamamatsu event, the Enlightened foiled every single attempt by the Resistance to take a shard, and were able to capture all 16 shards before the end of the third measurement. To put this in perspective, it's generally assumed that not all shards are going to be captured. You're just trying to see how many shards you can capture within the four measurements. The fact that they captured all shards to begin with is something incredible, but the fact that they did so with one measurement left is simply mind-boggling. At the end of the day, the Enlightened and Hamamatsu crushed the Resistance with a landslide victory, defeating the Resistance 7,482 to 3,100 points. Despite a valiant effort throughout the rest of the series, the Resistance was never able to close the gap set at Hamamatsu. And as a result, the Resistance lost its first series in two years. So what on earth caused the Resistance to fail so miserably when most of the time they do so incredibly well? Well, I think it comes down to their focus and strategy, which would determine is a color association of blue. So how would being focused and strategic get in the way of winning an entire series? Well, let me explain it to you this way. When you think of strategy, you probably think of the game of chess, probably because it's one of the oldest strategy games that's still around but also because it's a beautiful picture of what a strategy game should look like. There are a lot of moving parts, and each of these moving parts has one particular function. Each of the pieces can only move a certain way, and that's known beforehand. Also, you have to think three, four, five, maybe even ten moves ahead in order just to keep up. But what if you were told beforehand that the rules might possibly change mid-game? That at any point in time, any of the pieces could become the king? or that the board could just suddenly be flipped around. You couldn't play by the same strategy anymore. You would have to adapt to the changing situations in order to even stand a chance at winning. But even in a situation where it was less advantageous to play strategically, the resistance did so anyway. So the question remains, are they strategic just because that's who they are, or on a global level, does the color blue affect the way that they play the game? If the answer is yes, then we also have to assume that the same applies for the Enlightened. Does the color green affect the way that the Enlightened plays their game as well? I would argue, yes. Yes, it does. If you look at all of the numbers, including the stats from even 2014 and 2015, you can see that the Enlightened are always the ones to catch all the unique points, the points that could only be acquired through adapting to new gameplay styles points that require players to think intuitively rather than strategically. So, based on these facts, I would argue that in fact, colors do affect the way that we play augmented reality games. The numbers show it, the gameplay shows it, and science shows it. In conclusion then, 
we can determine that our minds are incredible machines that are always working in ways that we often do not see or understand. But unlocking those secrets and understanding those complexities can often be the key to understanding who we are and why we do some of the things that we do. What makes this concept so unique in applying it to augmented reality games is that it actually affects our everyday behavior. We drive 20 or 30 minutes out of the way just to catch a particular portal that might be used in a large field. Or maybe we throw links in a certain fashion or maybe we go to a certain place that we would have never gone to before simply because it benefits our faction. And what I'm saying here is not necessarily that colors have some kind of mind controlling property but simply that they persuade us to do things that we don't even think about doing. But they can sometimes change our entire mindset to frame the things which we already think and the things that we already see. Sometimes we are literally affected by the tinting of rose-colored glasses. And you know what? That's okay. Because it's a part of who we are as humans. It's a part of how our mind works. And we should embrace it and make the most of it. So to all you strategically minded, focused, resistance players out there, I say, keep doing what you're doing. It's not just the color blue, it's a part of who you are as a faction. And you should be proud of your two-year winning streak. And to the enlightened, keep looking at the bigger picture. Keep your mind open to the new possibilities. Because it's not just about being green, it's about being enlightened. But hey, what do I know? I'm just some cartoony kid in a lab coat. Well guys, I hope you learned something interesting in this video, and if you didn't, well, maybe you should look forward to the next Color Theory video that covers how Color Theory will affect Pokemon Go. Thank you so much for watching, and good night.